You're watching TVC Breakfast. Statistics released by the National Bureau of Statistics in conjunction with the Federal Road Safety Commission shows that every six hours, no fewer than four lives are lost on Nigerian roads. The daily toll is 15 persons and the monthly tally is 426 people. Every year, about 20,000 of the 12 million vehicles in the country are involved in an accident. A large percentage of these road accidents and deaths happened during the last quarter of the year as many Nigerians rushed to get things done and travel for festivities. To curb this trend, the Federal Road Safety Corps has begun a sensitization campaign across the country. The theme of this year's campaign is to maintain safe speed, avoid night travels and enjoy quality road experience. This is the crux of our discussion. And with me in the studio for more on this is the Executive Director, Health Emergency Initiative, Pascal Achinini. Pascal, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good to you see ask. you. Thank you for having me. Great. Nice to have here again. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Now, uh, we see that safety, like uh, you have, that has been your watchword over the years, is something that we have to take into every aspect of our lives especially when it comes to driving and staying alive. Now, we're focusing on, on that uh, aspect of things. Now, from your observation, when it gets to the last months of the year, there seem to be heightened activities, especially when it comes to traveling. Why is this so from your uh, experience and from your observation? Well, people have this concept or mindset that um, I've worked hard for throughout the year, mm -hmm. uh, most of the months in the year, mm -hmm. and this is a time to make merry. Uh, this is a time companies, individuals, the organizations, groups, mm -hmm. they want to come together. Uh, people want to give back to themselves, give that back to their family they are in, in, by way of celebration, by way of... Uh, uh, use the word enjoyment <laughs> <laughs> um, so it um, impacts on road act uh, movement and activities on the mm. roads on the highways or across uh, whether it's across the various mode of transportation and um, we have seen again I can't also um, by pass the aspect of the Christmas season mm. uh, is a major celebration mm. especially for Christians and um, in different parts of the world, as a period, people come to connect with their families. So naturally, it would uh, in heighten the movement of people on the road. And um, that movement also has its uh, side effect, the collateral damage of um, unintended mm. uh, crashes. And uh, crashes, of course, comes from uh, unplanned um, on disaster that you never planned. So this was... Um, not factored into what you yeah. want to do, but it yeah. comes, and uh, um, it is one of our. Uh, if, if we be, as we'll be going ahead in the conversation, it is the leading cause of death among people of five to thirty-five years in mm. Nigeria. Mm. Now, th there's a lot of concern uh, regarding the number of people who die. Although the road safety and uh, those agencies have been doing their best to create sensitization from what we see and what we hear uh, them do but how much of that they do they still need to do or how what is the impact of all of that sensitization let they me carry? also clarify something from mm. the statistics shared mm. um, by federal safety by Niger, uh, nbs Niger mm -hmm. of, uh, national bureau of statistics it is nowhere close to i've been a, in a in a forum in a program where Emergency agencies mm. gave a picture that uh, the number of Nigerians who died in uh, 2018, 2019, for instance, mm. 20, they cited 5,000 to 6,000 as the number. Uh, WHO experts who has more <coughs> access to data um, here pointed that 39,000 plus die annually. The tragedy is that we First, the federal safety is mostly on the highways. Mm. They're not in the inner streets. Where if you're, if there's an Okada accident, that leads to uh, loss of life, especially mm. a child is crossing and Okada is taking one mm -hmm. way and um, the fellow dies. That's 
may not be reported, especially we, with our culture that we don't get to the root cause of issues. So we'll just say, okay, it's been settled. And that is, there is no database that captures such. So it, the number is massively and grossly underrepresented. Mm. And the other uh, challenge is there is no broad-based collaboration and coalition that is addressing this. If you go to other parts of the world, they have taken measures. If you go to India, for instance, they have this Good Samaritan law. Mm. So that enhances the capacity of bystanders to address post crash care. In Nigeria, we that bill has been with uh, has been lying with the parliament for almost almost five to ten years. It's not been and it is making many Nigerians very unwilling to take action. Rather they take pictures, they take videos during emergency mm. situations or crisis situations and just stay because one they are scared that if they go the extra mile of uh, assisting the police or some of it especially the law for the nigerian police they mm -hmm. feel that they could be arrested that they are responsible mm -hmm. they take the victims in, in, to ca the in case the person dies, dies hmm. and they take the person to the hospital they they will not be allowed to go because they, they will, there is there have been many cases of mm. uh, them being branded as responsible for the um, accident and they have to deposit money mm. and if the person dies they will be held responsible so that there's also the thought of uh, them footing the bills yes, in the meantime yes. so mm. um, let me put it in perspective uh, we have been doing seeing this cycle mm. going on my challenge is are we waking up? What are we doing differently? I've seen the, what the road safety wants to do. But how much does that effort trickle down? And I commend the road safety. There have been so many areas. They have signed a MOU with our organization, together with some other agencies like National Topedic, Ibobi, hmm. FMC, Butemet, and then Lagos State, hosp selected hospitals in Lagos State. The sense is when accident victims are picked and taken to the hospitals, the by road safety, the police, mm -hmm. La Sambos, La mm -hmm. Sema, they can have immediate uh, resuscitation and uh, stabilization within the first 24 hours mm -hmm. at the expense of our organization. So we've been doing that since 2017. We signed this MOU. Wow. It has, uh, at least for cases referred or handled under this uh, scheme, we have had over 80% survival rate. As against the cases of the AIDS agencies take these uh, victims to hospitals mm -hmm. and they will be left most times they'll be in the ambulance because they will, there's this insistence of no deposit yeah no treatment, no treatment. and uh, it has led a lot to, uh, to the loss of many souls we also went a step further uh, one of our engagements we sh did a need assessment and federal safety la sambos and other agencies said more nigerians die uh, as a result of a crisis that, that they not being able to access care. There is uh, what, of course, you know what this concept of golden hours. Yeah, exactly. The golden hour is the first one to two hours when a crash happens. And uh, so many people have chances of survival, survival if help comes at that time. So road safety and all these agencies can share that if we tr train um, Nigerians on mm. how to handle uh, CPR, first aid, and mm. other basic support systems that more than that over fifty percent of deaths, the record will be um, saved. Mm. So we got um, in, put in place uh, an academy, first responders academy, and we started training. We trained Nigerian police, VIO, LASMA, road safety students in secondary schools, students in primary in uh, in the higher institutions, and even went a step further. Um, no ISC, of course, a lot mm. of them we are trained, but the road safety also help us to profile artisans like uh, vulcanizers, yeah. um, toy van operators, filling station attendants who have more passion and uh, vigor, mm. I, I would say more appetite to handle, to respond to emergencies on the highway mm. because they are on the highway. Exactly. Most of us are not on the highway. Mm. So we customize the training, use the local vernacular to ensure that they got the basic skills of knowing what to do and how to respond to emergencies. Mm. Tragically, if you check, if you do a count or a survey, over 80% of Lagosians, over 80% of Nigerians do not know the emergency number to call 
when, they, when there's an when emergency there's a, on the yes. road. Hmm. So pre-hospital care. I mean, when you have these written on some of the vehicles, especially like in Lagos, for yes. instance, you have them written on the vehicles and cars of Federal Safety Corps and police officers and so uh, on. Hey, people's attention are not... If you ask an average person here, what's the emergency number? They, some will say 911. Uh, you know, <laughs> 40 years ago, it was 911. But we have since moved that there's a 767, there's hmm. a 112, there's a 122 that are available for negotiations, 122767, then for up country one two two one one two for Lagosians, mm. seven 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 for Lagosians, and one two two for federal city outside both here and outside Lagos. Mm. So our goal is ensuring that from road related crashes to other pre hospital emergencies, including heart attack, cardiac arrest, a lot of people slump mm. without work on the highway, in the clubs, in churches, but people will just be pouring water. So we got <laughs> people trained and certified by American Heart Association. We have trained both directly and indirectly, we have trained over 3,500 between the, the last two years. And now we have got some corporates giving funds for us to train more. Some people are also signing up mm. to assess the training. Because it might be your child who is even having exactly. choking. Mm. So you know what to do at that time. But I think I want to take the conversation back to the safety measures mm -hmm. and uh, the global perspective around it. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, there, there, there is this resolution 74 stroke 299 by the United Nations General Assembly declaring 2021 to 2030 the decade of uh, action for road safety. Mm -hmm. The first decade ended in 2020. But there was not much achieved in Nigeria. So the, there's a change in para, there's a paradigm shift. The methodology of engagement, of involvement, of participation has significantly changed because prior to now, more of state actors were at the front line. Mm. Of course, the state actors will still have a very important and critical and dominant role to play. Mm. But civil society, the academia, um, and even uh, those that uh, communities mm. are, and the youths particularly are being engaged. So our organization, for instance, in the last eight, one and a half years, we've trained, uh, we've put up a youth community of about over 400 youths uh, using certain criteria, mm. training them on life-saving skills. We're also introducing this in secondary schools so that they will have first responders clubs, all of that. But coming back to the UN action, it focuses on ensuring that we have safer roads, mm. safer guaranteed emergency response system. Of all the things that is wrong with our Nigerian situation, this is the weakest point. Mm. Now, if road traffic accident is the leading cause of death among people of 5 to 35 years, and these are leaders of tomorrow, what has the government done about it? How has the private sector in their CSR engagement or resource allocation responded to these critical needs? How are they used being sensitized on basic life support skills in our curriculum in secondary tertiary institutions? Do we have a proper program that educates, enlightens, and equips Nigerians with the skills to handle emergencies? Mm. What has happened in other jurisdictions? If you go to Germany, if an average motorist, before you get your license, part of your training involves having first responder skills, CPR, AED, and uh, first aid skills, including car control, as we introduce here. Mm. If you go to America, it is not to be mentioned that you do, even for, if you're seeking for a job, you get a better advantage, you get a better advantage over some, if you have CPR and first aid skills mm. certified. So, so we need to include all of those in, our in, in, in the, because the point there is when you go for dri driving, uh, driving lessons, for instance, all of those are not necessarily included in, in depth. In the first place, the driving lessons requires that we need to reject the laws. Mm. It is essentially, um, we live in denial. So 90 if you check, over 60% of those who have licenses don't go to the rigorous process of the lessons supervised by somebody accredited mm. by the relevant agencies. 
But let's even say that some level semblance of that is happening. So incorporating this in the driving lessons uh, process of assessing driver's license is something that we should have done like yesterday. So it should be done now. Mm. We can start with private sector drivers. We can start with, uh, sell. if you go to Ghana, they even introduce it for cab drivers mm. that this is one of the required, they conducted trainings for them. So it is something we must in start now. It's also something we must integrate into the National Youth Service Scheme. That before you finish your one year national as, as, uh, service, you would have first responder skills. Because the thing is, that the, the scope of what we do, for instance, the one we conduct, if there's fire, the person can handle fire. Mm. If there's bite, the person can handle bite. If there's um, uh, poison, the mm. person can manage. If there's internal bleeding, the person can. And if someone there's who is drowning. External, or somebody drowning, mm. or in different areas of emergencies, mm. or, or the whole gamut of pre-hospital emergencies. Mm. So all that we could do to save a life before the person gets to the hospital is what this mission is meant is seeking to address mm. but we cannot be left behind as it happened in the last decade so what has the federal the, mm. key agencies like federal Minister of transportation mm. the vio the local government the state government the private sector and i repeat the private sector they have a major role to play it is good to commit 60% or 70% of your csr budget to entertainment but remember that if you have a a, a, an epidemic. This is an epidemic. Yeah. Something that takes 1.3 million lives mm. annually. It's a lot. It takes uh, about 50 million people are injured. Mm. And uh, losses to GDP of countries is as much as 3% or more, or sometimes 5% arising from road traffic accident. So, and then the trauma people live with for the rest of their lives. Because we have to go further to partner with an organization that amputees, those who were amputated as a result of road traffic mm. accident, they could have free artificial limbs. So that's also a further way to enhance chances of people picking up with their lives. So I've asked again, the Federal Minister of Transportation, of course, the Federal Road Safety Commission mm. is a key player here, the local government, the private sector, the academia, mm. because the tragedy that is responsible for these um, numbers not being, and are not paying attention to it is because we don't have the data. So if the academia collaborates with civil society, mm -hmm. NGOs, and then there's also synergy between these and the government, and then we could media. have a tech-driven data storage and retrieval system. One mm -hmm. of the things our organization is doing is to have, we are working on an application that will ensure road traffic cases, report, uh, crashes are reported, or even in emergency, within 10 minutes. Within, we, it's reported and attended to within 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Those trained as first responders, the way you have Uber, if you want to co check Uber here, you see an Uber here. So we have them onboarded on that platform. You saw the building collapse in Ikoyi the other day. At the point, they ran out. Of, there were issues about ambulance availability. So there will also be integration of ambulance service and into the process so that people, in case you need an ambulance, you can get one in a sh at a snap. Then... Hospitals that have specific strengths or competencies in s different areas, like um, if you, you also, it could also be accessible there. Instead of your roving from one part of Lagos to the other, mm. when you, your relative has one case that exactly. is life threatening. Mm. So we need to bring homegrown solution to our situation. Okay. Now, talk to us about the issue of night travels. They often say that uh, one should avoid night travels. But we also see or assume, let me say, that the traveling in the night is when there are less people, less vehicles on the road, where it is, or apart from the issues of security that, um, you know, we see attacks and armed robbery and all of that, but traveling in the night, we assume is supposed to be safest. Um, I don't subscribe to that. Okay. It is um, meant to have less vehicles on um, less vehicular movement during night. There should be less vehicular movement mm. during night travel. But that's where it ends. We don't have good roads. You remember that uh, recently um, Nupeng uh, threatened to go on strike exactly. on account of mm. the state of our roads. Mm. So if you're traveling at night 
uh, the roads can easily, a, a road that you uh, drove, drove through three months ago, going back after mm. three months, after the rains, it may have developed massive potholes that that can lead to crashes. So avoiding night travel is the best. And of course, in recent years, the upsurge in insecurity makes it more, mm, more compounded. precarious mm. to embark on night travels. The advantage is probably less than one over ten or, or over disadvantages of traveling at night. Mm. I urge everyone as much as possible. Yeah, many travel for different reasons at night. Some maybe because of business reasons. You take off from the southeast. You're here the next By morning. morning. You do. You don't have a place to stay, or you don't want to incur cost of hotel. The next morning, you you're done with. Your, you travel by night again. Those such may be fashionable five, ten years ago, okay. but it's no longer... It's no longer as fashionable. Yes. And the, the bad road situation mm. requires extreme... It's one of the areas that mm. this decade of action is pointing mm. to that. Every government, every stakeholder must work together to, for, to ensure safer roads, mm. to ensure safer vehicles, to ensure safer response systems that enhances and guarantees access to um, uh, post-crash care. All right. Pascal, actually, let's leave you here now. Thank you so much for your enlightenment and thank you for what you do. We thank, thank God. You. We look forward that this decade would uh, witness improved Amen. Uh, road safety, road safety for, us all. for everyone. And, um, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right.